you know, it's almost self-evident that for Israel to endure as the nation-state of the Jewish people, it has to contend adequately with these two imperatives, the geographic imperative and the demographic imperative. Mm -hmm. Because if it does not, obviously, it will either become untenable geographically or untenable demographically mm -hmm. or both. To, con to contend adequately with the uh, geographic imperative, Israel must avoid any perilous territorial withdrawals in Judea and Samaria and basically maintain control of the highlands and the Jordan Valley which lie just east of the heavily populated coastal plain. To uh, contend adequately with the demographic imperative, it has to uh, ensure that there is an overwhelmingly dominant Jewish majority. Now, uh, some people, uh, you mentioned Caroline Glick, say that if we, if we uh, annex the territory, there will still be a Jewish majority. Now, that, that may well be true, but there will still be a massive Muslim minority anywhere between 35 to 40 percent, which will make a coherent and cohesive society, especially one with a dominant Jewish nature, uh, impossible. Mm -hmm. Basically, that's a recipe for the uh, uh, Lebanization of Israeli society. Mm -hmm. Therefore, almost as a matter of uh, mathematical deduction, the only real option is to encourage Arab immigration and reduce the Arab presence within the, the area that Israel requires for its uh, sovereign control. The only non-kinetic way to do that without forced uh, expulsion is uh, by economic inducements. So uh, you know, the, what I've been trying to push now for almost a decade is, uh, to, is for Israel to adopt a policy of large-scale Arab immigration through a system of uh, positive incentives for leaving and disincentives for staying. Because if that does not happen, Israel will either become untenable if it withdraws to what Abba Evan uh, dubbed the Auschwitz borders, make uh, the defense of Israel intolerably expensive. Uh, you can see what's happening in Gaza, with a, where Israel has a 50-kilometer front abutting a sparsely populated uh, agricultural uh, area. So imagine what would happen if you had a 500 kilometer border with topographical superiority abutting a heavily populated urban area. The situation would be, would be basically untenable. Mm -hmm. so, so I believe that eventually, I hope not too late, uh, people will come to the realization that the only way to maintain Israel as a nation state of the Jewish people mm -hmm is through large-scale uh, Arab uh, immigration to third-party countries where they can find a better and more prosperous life. Yeah. Who would put the money up? Uh, the, the, the money is not really a problem. The, 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 pro the problem is political, is, is political legitimacy. Uh, even today, Israel, Israel has a, a GDP of uh, uh, one-third of a trillion dollars. Uh, so spread over a decade and a half, Israel could probably bur could, uh, shoulder the burden of um, of most of the the, the financing, but uh, you know if if this was legitimized in the developed world, it would be a fraction of a percent of the GDP of the industrialized world. So the money is not the problem. The the problem is is uh, generating political. Uh, political legitimacy for it. And if you look at uh, look, America spent over a trillion dollars on two failed wars f against terror in Afghanistan and, uh, and in uh, Iraq. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the, the problem is not the money, the problem is generating political legitimacy for it. Mm -hmm. uh, how would one conquer the opposition to the plan from the political left? Well, there they, they, they you come to perhaps what is one of Israel's major strategic failures, the conduct or the misconduct of its, uh, of its uh, public diplomacy. Uh, you know, I've been advocating for, a year, for years now that if Israel were to uh, allot 1% of state budget, that would be well over a billion dollars. With a billion dollars, you can win a lot of hearts and change a lot of minds. Uh, you know, I sort of flippantly say that, you, that Israel could convince the world that Tuesday was Wednesday and, 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 and that the Pope was, was Buddhist. 
with uh, put it this way all the other all the other uh, paradigms have failed uh, we've seen the two state solution which has only brought uh, misery to the palestinians what's going on in gaza today is probably the the ultimate indictment of the two state solution this the, the, the raw sewage the polluted water the uh, the power outages these are all because someone thought they could foist statehood on the Palestinians. So, <laughs> you, you know, and, and uh, as I said before, the one-state solution is a recipe for the Lebanization of the, of the Israeli society. So, uh, almost by a process of, of elimination or mathematical deduction, the only thing that you, Israel needs to hold the territory and reduce the Arab presence. There seems to be no other non-kinetic way to do that than by encouraging uh, Palestinian uh, immigration through economic inducements. And, you know, when you, if, you, if, you, if you want to compare the morality of, say, the two-state solution with what I'm suggesting, basically the two-state solution is just a code word for the establishment of yet another homophobic, misogynistic Muslim majority on the fringes of Tel Aviv. And what I'm suggesting is giving the Palestinian Arabs or the non-belligerent Palestinians hope of a better life elsewhere in third-party countries out of the circle of violence and extricate themselves from the clutches of the cruel, corrupt cliques who've led them astray for decades. Now, if you compare you know, what sounds more liberal and, 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 and progressive, misogynistic, homophobic, uh, homophobic Muslim majority tyranny or better life for non-belligerents elsewhere. You know, I, I think, I think the, the decision is clear. Obviously, helping people find a better life for them elsewhere is, is the preferred solution. Right, right. But uh, in Gaza, for example, when, uh, when Israel withdrew, uh, then Fatah came in, uh, there were uh, kneecappings as uh, uh, disincentives to uh, intimidate the public into accepting a Fatah deal. Uh, what's to keep, or what would be different in this case, uh, wouldn't the Arabs, uh, uh, the Arab mafia essentially intimidate people into not accepting Israel's deal? Well, uh, any alternative to the two-state solution, whether it's my solution or Naftali Bennett's solution or Caroline Blick's solution, involves the uh, dismantling and disarming of the Palestinian uh, administration there. Uh -huh. There'd be no other way to do it. Uh, certainly well, there would be resistance, but I think it would be up to Israel to, uh, uh, to contend with that and overcome that resistance. On the other hand, we can just carry on the way we're doing now, you know, and have the south of Israel aflame. Uh, I think it's only a matter of time. You know, you know if, if, you look what, if you look what's happened, you'll see that the Arabs have developed, or the Palestinian Arabs have developed a method of attack. Israel's devised some kind of defense. And then the Arabs have devised something that overcomes that defense. You know, there were attacks, so we put up a fence. So they fired rockets, so we invented the Iron Dome at with, 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 with great expense. Uh, so they started digging tunnels. And now we're putting down a billion dollar barrier, uh, which the Palestinians are now flying kites and balloons over. And I think it's only a matter of time until they develop a, a, swarm, of, uh, a swarm of drones with possibly non-conventional loads on them to explode over Israeli communities. So, you know, what's the alternative? We can carry on doing what we're doing now and reap the results. Indeed, if, you know, if anyone had envisaged in 2005 when Israel left Gaza that this would be the, the, the situation, he would have been dismissed as a right-wing radical scaremonger because no one would have withdrawn from Gaza if they thought that this was going to be the, 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 the situation. Uh, so, you know, what can you do? You can, you can incorporate the Palestinian Arabs as enfranchised citizens within this, within Israel, and you'll have Lebanon. You will have eventually. You'll have ex accelerated uh, Jewish immigration. The Jewish majority will be eroded away, and eventually you'll have instead of a democratic Jewish state, a Muslim tyranny. So I I, I don't think it's uh, it's uh, it's much of a uh, there's much of a choice. I think at some stage people have to bite the bullet and realize that if they want to maintain. Israel is a nation state of the Jewish people. This is what they have to do.